Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video I thought we'd catch up on some Dark Deception news, as new and substantial information has dropped since our last catch up on the game a few months ago. Now remember, footage and screenshots used in this video have either been sourced from the Dark Deception Twitter account or Glowstick Entertainment's YouTube channel, so go and give them a follow using the links provided below this video when you're done watching it. With that said, let's get into the latest news. The first thing I'd like to talk about in today's video is a brand new game from Glowstick Entertainment, the team behind Dark Deception. This is a multiplayer focused title called Dark Deception Monsters and Mortals. A new trailer just released for the game, so let's take a look. <laughs> Rather than acting as a DLC or patched in update to the original single player game, Monsters and Mortals is set to be an entirely separate game altogether. As you can see from the trailer, a new enemy will be present in the form of the Brute from popular indie horror game Monstrum. The more observant of you may have noticed this partnership between Glowstick Entertainment and Monstrum developer Team Junkfish forming gradually over the past few months. It began with a poll where game director Vince Livings inquired as to which other horror games fans would like to see Dark Deception collaborate with, Monstrum being one of the main choices. This led to an interview between Vince and Team Junkfish programmer Stephanie Baisley. With Monstrum having plenty of fans of its own, it will be interesting to see if some of them join us on the battlefield when Monsters and Mortals launches. The Brute is certainly a fearsome foe as anyone who has played the original Monstrum can attest. This is also exciting news as it suggests we will see Dark Deception continue to cross over with other indie horror games in the future. We already have Ayano's Lovesick Labyrinth launching later this year, a collaboration with Yandere Simulator. So it will be interesting to see if Monstrum's Brute ends up being the only guest found within Monsters and Mortals, or if perhaps, much like Dead by Daylight, more tie-ins follow if the game finds success. It would be pretty cool to see a new monster roll out in the lineup every few months as DLC, but we'll have to wait and see how the game plays first. With that in mind, how can we expect a multiplayer Dark Deception to function? Will this see a group of players assume the role of humans, much like our character Doug Hauser in the original game, desperately trying to collect up all the soul shards and escape a level while being pursued by cold and calculated AI controlled monsters? Or will we play as both the monsters and humans trying to escape? Will there be just one human player, with the rest of us taking on monster roles to try and get them? Or perhaps a mixture of different modes including elements of all of the above? Running away from smart human players is bound to provide a tougher challenge than ever before, and plenty of fear inducing moments to boot, as well as a lot of laughs if you're playing with friends I imagine. We can see from the trailer many familiar faces, so it seems as though we will finally be able to assume a role of some of our favourite monsters, everything from murder monkeys to gold watchers. It will be interesting to see how their mechanics work when controlled by real people. The title Monsters and Mortals certainly suggests we will get to play on both sides of the battlefield, but again we will have to wait for further details to know for sure. Even if we only get to play as humans, it will be a thrilling experience working together as a team to collect all required resources and then all racing to the escape portal together before darkness descends. At this time it is unknown when Dark Deception will make its multiplayer debut. It seems likely to be after the release of Chapter 4 at the very least. But this trailer has certainly given us some idea of what to expect, and personally I couldn't be more excited. Moving on from the announcement of Monsters and Mortals, we have some updates for Dark Deception Chapter 4. 
Several of these updates come from Vince Livings himself and can be found during his live streamed Q&A sessions. These can be found on the Glowstick Entertainment YouTube channel and do contain some great insights into the game development process. The first of the new information here pertains to the Nurse stage. If you remember previously, when completing Chapter 3 of Dark Deception and entering the final Nightmare Portal, we were greeted by this silhouette. This was the original Nurse design, however the developers felt it was a little too Silent Hill-esque and redesigned the main enemy of the hospital stage to better fit with the Dark Deception aesthetic. Born from this decision was the Reaper Nurse. However, Glowstick did say the original nurse, now known as the Matron, was still to be included in some form and will feature during the hospital level as a threat, despite not being the main enemy type. Here is what Vince had to say on the subject. She's actually voiced by uh, Kat Cressida. She did the voice of Agatha. So we brought her back and she's doing the voice of the big nurse, whose name is actually the Matron. What made you decide to replace the big nurse with the Reaper nurses? She's still in the level, uh, maybe she's been replaced as the main enemy. She just plays a different role this time. We felt her look was a little bit different in style from our other characters. It had become a little bit too Silent Hill looking. She's not going to be a common enemy like the Reaper nurses. Elsewhere in Chapter 4 news, we have a couple of new screenshots, which seem to showcase the Trigger Teddy and Mama Bear stage of the game. In the last update, we took a look at this image of a cave opening and speculated this environment was most likely where Mama Bear and her babies would inhabit. The more we see of this stage, the more logical this conclusion seems to be. Especially as we now know the Joy Joy Gang inhabit a theme park type stage known as Joy Joy Land, and the nurses a hospital. You can see this environment looks incredibly creepy and dimly lit, meaning navigation through these caves requires us to be on high alert and make use of a telepathy ability wherever possible to track potential danger. The floor is covered in human remains as well, presumably the bodies of fellow travellers who have failed to collect Beas her soul shards and return safely to the escape portal. During the Q&A streams, a little more information was given as to how the Trigger Teddies will behave. I wouldn't say they're as fast as the nurse or as fast as some of the Joy Joy gang members. They're, they're about as fast as the monkeys. I, I would put them around that speed. They're slower than the player, but if you, you know, don't pay attention, they'll catch you pretty quickly. They can swarm you if you draw too many of them together, but they're not designed, their AI is not designed to gather that way like the clowns are. So that, I would say that's the main difference between them. So what we can gather from this snippet from the developer is that Trigger Teddies are not a swarm type enemy like the clown gremlins. They will generally act more like murder monkeys, spread out throughout the level after giving chase. From an early render it seems these baby bears may spawn from their mama, crawling out from her body in gruesome fashion. However they are said to be easy to outrun, so it seems keeping track of them will be key to our survival. Perhaps, as they are not a swarm type enemy, we will only see 3 or 4 spawn in at any one time, again as indicated by this render. A little bit of Chapter 5 news also featured during the third Q&A Vince conducted. Apparently Chapter 5 is to have the most stages of any chapter so far. Will Chapter 4 be a much bigger chapter than Chapter 5, or are they evenly matched? I would say they're about the same scale, but Chapter 5 has more levels. You could use that to say that Chapter 5 is a little bit bigger. It also seems we won't have quite as long a wait as we had for Chapter 4, which currently is coming up on one year after the launch of Chapter 3. The team at Glowstick have been working on Chapter 5 simultaneously to ensure a much quicker release. This really gets me thinking just how ambitious Chapter 4 and 5 must be with this level of time taken to ensure they're really great. The last piece of Dark Deception news to look at today is a quick recap of the mobile port. Again, this has been delayed several times as the team want to release it in a bug-free and highly polished state. As well as this, the coronavirus has of course affected production too, with members of the team now working remotely from home. Still, from recent images released showcasing the Crazy Carnival stage, it's easy to see why the mobile version of Dark Deception has taken so long to produce. It looks very similar to the PC original, albeit with a lower overall fidelity due to the massive gulf in hardware capability. 
So with that, we're all caught up with the latest Dark Deception news coverage. A brand new multiplayer game, some chapter 4 info and screenshots, and a recap of progress on the mobile port. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're looking forward to Dark Deception, remember to give it a like, comment down below and of course subscribe for more coverage of Dark Deception and plenty of other horror games to boot. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.